वेलकम स्टूडेंट सी एच सिक्स फाइव जीरो टू यूनिट वन बी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्पेक्ट्रा पार्ट टू इन पार्ट वन वी हैव डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द सिलेक्शन रूल फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्पेक्ट्रा स्पिन सिलेक्शन रूल एपर्ट सिलेक्शन रूल एंड वील स्टडी द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्पेक्ट्रा ऑफ सम ट्रांजिशन मेटल कॉम्प्लेक्सिस ऑफ डी टू टू डी डी वन टू डी टेन कन्फिग्रेशन नाउ हि वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द ऑर्गिल डायग्राम Uh, combined orgel diagram for the same and uh, how we will going to get the spectra and their pattern different uh, in a different configuration so that we are going to study in this part i am dr devang pandya from department of chemistry sanjeevs college autonomous ahmedabad well you have heard the name of uh, leslie eliga eliza orgel uh, and he has given some uh, diagram so leslie eliza orgel now this is a brief introduction regarding that fellow he born in london england and die in california he is a british nationality and he has worked in this kind of uh, reputed institute and he has given this orgel diagram so this is brief introduction regarding leslie eliza orgel now in this orgel diagram we have uh, orgel diagram for d1 and d9 configuration i have taken here d1 d9 because they are having the similar pattern uh, let us see how the similar pattern would be here we have d1 configuration uh, in this transition metal series d1 configuration has con electronic configuration as argon core 3d1 4s0 uh, term symbol would be 2d Uh, in this 2D term symbol, we have only one unpaired electron, and that unpaired electron goes when this degeneracy destroyed and split into two group P2G and EG. The unpaired electron enter into P2G. And the correlation diagram here we can see that for D1 configuration is 2D, and this is the baseline dotted line, and the P2G has lower energy than this. EG has higher energy. and the splitting between this t2g and eg will be shown here as delta o octahedral field so here this d1 configuration indicates that the electron will transition from t2g to eg and it would be only one transition but in previous presentation we studied that uh, due to this john yan taylor distortion or vibronic coupling and inter mixing of p and d orbital uh, small small energy gap containing more energy level would be there and instead of this single transition there should be uh, three transition and out of this three transition for two transition we got overton and for uh, lower energetic another transition will going to get a shoulder peak so this d1 configurations gives you a big hump then a shoulder peak that is because of the loss of degeneracy of this t2g and eg group for the and it instead of single transition it will going to give us a uh, triple transition there that is the reason we'll going to get a hump in the uh, d d transition of d1 configuration now let us compare it with d9 configuration argon core 3d9 4s0 where here you can see that only one unpaired electron like uh, d1 configuration we have and we have the same term that is 2d here also this electron will going to enter into t2g and then goes into eg but because this is more than halfly filled this things will going to revert and when we uh, this two will going to loss the degeneracy due to either you can say yon taylor distortion due to either you can say um, vibronic coupling or inter mixing of p and d orbital will going to get the say, dis uh, destroy in the symmetry of octahedral geometry and that this uh, this symmetry will leads to some different kind of transition so instead of single transition as you can see here will going to get the things will going to little opposite uh, compared to d1 configuration in d1 configuration t2g lower energetic and eg higher energetic here why this thing happen for that we need to study whole formalism that theory we are going to study in this unit later on but here the things looks as if it is uh, moving from eg to t2g rather than t2g to eg although this d9 configuration is octahedral geometry we found the electronic transition happens in this reverse order as comparison with d1 case i am going to show you d1 case how it is 
here you can see eg up t2g down while in d9 case t2g up eg down why this reverse i have written it is not by mistake it is written because we have whole formalism theory behind this we are going to study that whole formalism and you come to know why this thing happened here so this is another orgel diagram for d9 configuration and as you see in d1 configuration and d9 configuration the term is similar and therefore we can show the combined orgel diagram for this d1 and d9 system here in d1 electron configuration only one electron is present in d orbital while in d9 also one unoccupied space is available as well that means unpaid electron uh, there as well it means d9 system contain one position one positive hole now here the story get default compared to d1 case d9 contain one positron while d1 have only one electron so when you see the octahedral geometry it is from eg to t2g while here in d9 due to this one positron the when electron transits from eg to t2g the positron travel from uh, uh, t2g to eg or either if the electron transits from uh, t2g to eg uh, one electron travel from eg to t2g and that is why in d9 configuration here we shown in a reverse order as compared with this d1 configuration in d1 configuration eg up t2g down here uh, sorry here in this only electron travel from t2g to eg uh, in a octahedral field while here in d9 configuration when electron travel from t2g to eg the positively charged positron travel from eg to t2g and that is why it is shown uh, as if uh, the positron travel from eg to t2g it shows a tetrahedral kind of uh, movement of the positron so that is why that positron uh, that is a positively charged hole that is absence of electron in d9 configuration will gives a reverse arrangement the ground state term symbol for d1 and d9 are similar that is 2d according to crystal field theory this 2d split into t2g and eg and as uh, compared to d1 system this splitting is opposite in d9 already i have explained and that opposite because of the travel of positively charged hole or positron now in excited state and in ground state d1 system that is titanium plus 3 ion electron is filled in this fashion here you can see that in t2g one electron is there in t2g eg is going to have zero electron while in uh, excited state this one electron travel to higher energy level so eg get one electron while t2g get zero now the probability of the arrangement of this single electron in this configuration in ground state of t2g1 has three possibility like it will be like dxy1 at the same time dyz and dzx would be zero while if the dyz is one then at the same time dxy and xz is zero and when dxz is one dxy and yz is going to be zero so these three possibilities uh, are there when t2g1 we need to show in the ground state in d1 configuration while in excited state of eg uh, we have only one electron so there is two possibility in the excited state that is uh, d uh, z square 0 and x square minus y square 1 while second probability is d z square 1 and d x square minus y square 0 so here you can see that this indicates in t2g level becomes least energetic and eg is going to become more energetic so in the excited state and in ground state d9 now that is the study of d1 case this is the study of d1 case where you can see that one electron is in t2g and then entered into eg and the possibility shows that t2g is lower energetic eg is higher energetic please keep remember this uh, when I am going to explain you now the another example that is D9 case where copper 2 ion is there and we are going to see the electron refilling in it. Here you can see that T2G is completely filled while EG is having one space, vacant space and that vacant space is shown by this hole that is called positively charged hole or positron. So when this electron from T2G travel to EG, 
you can see here the this one is paired up this positively hold travel to t2g eg to t2g so we'll going to get the ground state configuration is eg1 t2g 0 this is wrongly written it is eg6 uh, sorry t2g6 and eg3 while here t2g5 eg1 eg4 eg4 so that you need to correct here t2g6 eg3 here t2g5 eg4 that you need to uh, correct in the ground state and excited state configuration now looking to this configuration in the ground state we have t2g6 and eg3 and there is two possibility for this arrangement that is t2g6 dz square 2 while the x square minus y square 1 or t2g6 dz square 1 and the x square minus y square 2 so this two probability is there in the ground state while in the excited state d t2g5 eg4 we have three possibility in this three possibility first one is dx square dxy2 dyz2 while dxz is 1 and eg4 second uh, dxy2 dyz1 so here uh, zx1 now here yz1 and xz is 2 and eg4 would be there as similar and here xy1 then yz and zx will be 2 and eg would be 4 so this three possibility in excited state and only two possibility there in the ground state now keeping these two in my things in mind it, it indicates that the ground state becomes more energetic and excited state become less energetic hence the splitting of uh, term in the d9 case is quite opposite compared to d1 system which already i have shown in the previous slides where uh, i have already said that it is this is not by mistake written it is uh, intentionally shown that d9 configuration have opposite arrangement compared to d1 system so taking into consideration we have this orgel diagram here 2d is there delta o splitting energy this is berry center here the energy of eg is high t2g is low there d1 will going to show octahedral geometry when electron travel from t2g to eg but in d9 case when electron travel from t2g to eg the positron travel from eg to t2g so for positron it looks as if it is a tetrahedral geometry similarly the opposite side the combined orgel diagram shows that here you can see that d9 indicate eg to t2g so it is like octahedral field but for that d1 configuration it is from t2g to eg so it is showing tetrahedral geometry this is considered as a combined orgel diagram for d1 d9 case thus when in a d1 system electron transition take place in d9 positron transition will occur in both the transition uh, equal energy is absorbed so the band of uh, both this uh, configuration obtained at equal frequencies now that is called positive hole formalism or hole equivalence theory in hole formalism uh, the hole formalism facilitate us to understand the resembles exist in the energy levels of the spectroscopic terms D1 and D9 system has equivalent ground state spectroscopic term that is 2D. Uh, D1 has one electron while D9 has one deficiency of electron or we can say one positron or positively charged hole there or vacancy of electron. Thus there is an equivalency of a negative electron and positively charged electron that is considered as hole. Uh, similarly d2 d8 d3 d7 d4 d6 also have equivalency of negative electron and positively electron that is considered as whole this is known as whole formalism or whole equivalence so the equation for whole formalism is represented as d raised to n is equal to d raised to 10 minus n or either d raised to 5 minus n is equal to d raised to 5 plus n this spectroscopic term arise through the uh, repulsion between the electron and electron and such repulsion is represented as minus e into minus e upon r square that is the distance between them so e square upon r square that is represented by i and r would be the radius uh, or we can say the distance between two electrons 
instead of electron if positron exist yet the value of the attraction would be e square upon r square remains the similar so the term such obtained would be similar as well thus in the equation d9 uh, uh, is equal to d raised to 10 by mi 10 minus 9 or either d raised to 5 minus 9 uh, is equal equivalent to d raised to 5 plus n here n means the negative electron or it may be the positively charged hole that is known as positron so from d1 to d4 the energy levels generated considering the repulsion while the configuration more than d5 instead of repulsion by considering attraction energy levels are raised uh, in the names of electronic state uh, we have the example uh, for a2g the labels a here e or either t stands for the non degenerate doubly degenerate and triply degenerate while the numeric subscript stands for the multiple of the state which is the number sorry uh, which is the number of the unpaired electron plus one and that is how we can show the terms Molecan terms Now here you can see the splitting of RS uh, uh, or rectus uh, uh, sorry uh, Russell's and Sanders spectroscopic terms in the crystal field uh, free ion uh, in term and uh, terms in the crystal field so free ion has s term that is indicated by one that is s orbital single so it can be represented in crystal field as a 1 g g stands for zeroed that is symmetric a arbitrary that is one and it is only one so written as one now p that has px py pz so it is triply degenerate so represented as t and 1g represent the zeroed that is symmetric arrangement and written as three similarly d5 that is t2g plus eg and that T2G plus EG, T2G has 3 and EG has 2. So, total 5 would be there. Similarly, for F, uh, we have A2G1, T2G3 and T1G3. So, that way we can have 3 plus 3, 6 and 1, 7. For G9, we have A1G1, EG2, T1G3 and T2G3. 3 and 3, 6, 6 and 2, 8 and 1, 9. So, the G9 would be there and uh, that is how we can calculate the total degeneracy total degeneracy can be calculated by adding sp uh, multiplying spin multiplicity with orbital orbital degeneracy spin multiplicity can be obtained from this equation 2s plus 1 when it is multiplied with orbital degeneracy that is represented as 2l plus 1 so this 2 will going to gives us total degeneracy that means 2d term is there then its total degeneracy would be 10 so it should have 10 different arrangement now the terms of uh, d2 and d8 configuration these are equal uh, so that the terms in the increasing order when we are going to arrange in the increasing order of energy of uh, d2 and d8 system we are going to get triplet f triplet p tri uh, singlet g singlet d and singlet s as maximum energy According to the selection rule, triplet to triplet transition is allowed transition while triplet to singlet transition is forbidden. So, we are going to consider only triplet to triplet, not triplet to singlet. So, only one transition is considered and it is allowed transition and according to crystal field theory, the diagram indicating splitting in octahedral and tetrahedral field is called Orgel diagram of D2 and D8 configuration. Here is the Orgel diagram for D2 and D8. Uh, when D2 is octahedral, because it has a hole formalism equivalency with D8, that means D8 have two hole and D2 has two electron. When electron travels from T1G to T2G, T1G to T1G and T1G to A2G, similarly for D8, uh, the hole will travel in a reverse order. So there you can see in this. Uh, a combined orgel diagram of D2 and D8. In this combined orgel diagram, you can see here these two line will going to deviate than the standard value. So the deviation is shown here as well in the form of this green line and this black black line. Now the splitting of D2 in octahedral field and splitting of D8 in tetrahedral field are equal. Similarly, splitting of D2 in tetrahedral field and splitting of D8 in octahedral field are equal. Splitting of D2 and D8 in octahedral and tetrahedral fields are opposite to each other. 
from orgel diagram the probable transition of d2 and d8 configuration in octahedral and tetrahedral fields are predicted and relatively position of the peak is known here you can see the electronic configuration of uh, uh, vanadium plus 3 in hexa aqua vanadium plus 3 complex uh, and that is a case of uh, d2 configuration so the term symbol increasing order of uh, energy for d2 and d8 system already i have shown earlier here in uh, triplet f and triplet p the arrangement of electron parallel so the spin multiplicity would be three uh, while in excited state uh, singlet g singlet d singlet s the spin of electron are anti-parallel so their spin multiplicity would be one now according to spin selection rule triplet to triplet transition is considered as allowed transition while uh, triplet to singlet transition is considered as forbidden transition so only one possibility of electronic transition would be there that is triplet f to triplet p and that we need to consider here in the electronic spectra of the d2 configuration so here uh, the single orgel diagram for d2 d8 configuration is shown and we will going to get this three different transition of different energy and that is why this d2 configuration will going to give you three peak so according to the crystal field theory in octahedral field a triplet f split into lower energetic containing triplet t1g and higher energetic containing triplet t2g and triplet a2g levels while triplet p has triplet t1g level and the transition between these energy levels take place in this orgel diagram now this is a combined orgel diagram of both this already i have shown you so i am not going to discuss again now in d2 d8 system we have these uh, terms and according to selection rule triplet to triplet transition is allowed while triplet to singlet transition is forbidden so only triplet p to triplet f or triplet f to triplet p transition should be considered and according to crystal field theory the diagram indicating the splitting of d2 d8 system in the octahedral and tetrahedral field is called d2 d8 orgel diagram now here you can see that three uh, peak would be there sorry yes peak one two and three one is in the uv light and two would be in the one is in the visible and the other one is in the infrared so we'll, uh, this is the uh, real uh, electronic spectra of hexa ammonia nickelate uh, the feature of the electronic spectra that we need to uh, need to be able to master our naming of the electronic state and the transition uh, explanation of the relative intensity of band in the spectra of complex of the uh, transition metal ions uh, according to that leopard uh, spin selection rules calculation of crystal field splitting parameters of energy of dd bands uh, this is the electronic spectra of hexa aqua nickelate and it will going to show you green color and this is these are the three different transition of it this is hexa aqua nickelate and there is also the similar pattern is going to be observed now when you see the selection rule you can see this is a higher peak and that high peak is going to be obtained by the charge transfer band that is a leopard allowed as well as spin allowed transition and very intense color is going to be observed over here while triplet a2g to even singlet a1g leopard uh, and spin forbidden so weak transition and gives a hump over here and rest a b and c will going to give you uh, the uh, mandatory intensity uh, mediate inten intense uh, uh, splitting is going to be observed in hexa aqua nickelate complex on the previous slide we saw the two bands due to these two transitions the band at uh, 1180 nanometer which in uh, transition shows below corresponding to delta o for the complex and uh, hence the energy would be uh, you can see splitting energy would be 8500 semi inverse yeah the weak band would be there for this energy transition which is forbidden transition the three types of bands would be obtained in this hexa aqua nickelate leopard allowed plus spin allowed charge transfer which is very high in intensity leopard forbidden plus spin allowed transition that is triplet to triplet moderate intensity and this one is low intensity 
when you see the mo diagram you can see the splitting in the energy level like this one this is not in our course just to explain you the uh, transition in the mo there are two mechanism that allow forbidden or electronic transition become somewhat allowed transition that is vibronic coupling or mixing of state which already we have discussed in, in our previous lecture so i am not going to discuss further here and that is why we will going to get this transition shift uh, weak ligand and strong ligand so this indicates the effect of ligand field on central metal ion central metal is quite similar so there is no effect of the electron configuration but here you can see ligands are different we will going to get different intensity in the peak of the electronic spectra of transition metal series and that is due to this vibratory coupling or inter uh, ionic uh, inter orbital mixing uh, so already we have discussed i am not going to discuss much more here and in the vibronic coupling you can see the planar or in octahedral geometry this will going to enlarge this will going to enlarge but instead this distortion will take place and that distortion will going to give rise to this different energy level and hence we're going to get this this is the another example for the dissymmetry this for this is for d5 case In a tetrahedral metal with tetrahedron has no center of symmetry and so orbital in such symmetry cannot be graded hence d level in the tetrahedral complex e and t2 uh, with no g or girard this largely overcomes the leopard selection rule so that the tetrahedral complex sorry uh, uh, tend to be very intense in color and we can see in the example there with this color uh, if you create some solution of uh, hexa aqua cobalt which is pink in color uh, very fainted color a uh, pink color would be there and with that if you are going to write on a paper and you are going to heat it it will going to give you blue color spectra which is very intense and the writing will emerge and you can get that emerge writing on the paper with that this is enough from my end thank you very much for paying attention to this video lecture